Josh, uh, welcome back to the program. We, um, as I like to say, talk and text more than people know. Uh, how are you, man? <laughs> hey, what'd you what'd you do today? What did I do today? I uh, I went to work, and then I came home and I worked out, hmm. and then I made dinner, and now I'm on the uh, podcast with you. Okay, well, what was uh, what was for dinner? So, uh, tacos. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Just boring ass tacos, like nothing fancy. Just so no yeah, more gym. El Paso tacos, gym, no, called. no more gym membership for you. You're working out at home. Uh, yeah, I, I um, I think I left the gym like two months ago, and it's funny. I'm in better shape in the last six weeks than like the entire like two years I was going to the gym. Hmm. So, well, good for you. But You'll... I did learn a lot at the gym. Like I mm-hmm. had a trainer, and and he taught me a lot of exercises and a lot of uh, equipment and things like that. So now I just bought all that equipment for the house, like you know the 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 bands and all that stuff. So. Bands. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, well, you're looking good, so it's a, yeah. it's paying off. So, thank you, sir. Yeah, down thirty pounds. Really, I've been frustrated with mine for- now because of my uh, mine's really more geared around a, a physical therapy. Uh, I'm not getting, and also the fact that, you know, I'm so fucking old, uh, I can't do like, like high impact cardio. I can only really do a bike. Um, but I'm frustrated. My weight is, it's about, uh, 10 pounds less than it was when I started about two years ago, but I did get to, my doctor started telling me some bullshit, like, oh, you're just converting it into fat or the fat into muscle. So that in muscles, you know, weighs more than fat. That's why right. you look better, but you, you still have the same weight, but so I didn't believe that bullshit until I put on a pair of jeans I hadn't worn in about six months, and uh, yeah, there's there's uh, some improvement there. So I'm feeling good. Yeah, it's crazy. I um I was real bad on the diet sodas, and like I I cut those out <laughs> like six like in the last six weeks. Like I cut those out, drank way more coffee, like and just you know a lot more water, a lot more coffee, a little bit of Gatorade. Hmm. It was funny. I went to the doctor about this, and I was just like. He goes, well, you need to, you know, no, no diet sodas. I'm like, what do people drink? Like, it, mm-hmm. it was a very odd thing to ask, but, um, but well, yeah, there's, so, there's non-diet pop you could try. Yeah, but that stuff's just too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to but, uh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. I mean, neither are good for you, but, uh, but I know diet soda is probably like the absolute worst. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I. I never liked the flavor of diet soda, so I never really got a chance to, at no point ever, dig into it. So um, I did have a pretty heavy soda addiction that I kicked, I think, probably 20 years ago at this point. But, uh, well, hey, I got a little surprise for you. Okay. Um, being the world's biggest Jelly Roll fan, at least the one that I had okay. in my life. Can I see if there? So I'm, I'm playing a guitar for the, the viewers at home. I'm not going to adjust this. So, you know, I know how much you love him. And so I was like... I own it. <laughs> oh, I had a pick in the string. I own it. Talk to God when I need a favor. I own it. I don't remember the words. Need a savior to pick up the bass now. That's what I was going with this. No, so um, it came on the radio and then it just kind of hit me that it's that E D uh, E G D A progression. How much money has that made musicians over? I don't know, the course of pop music for sure. Uh, that has made a lot of people a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did hear, I, I can't remember exactly who said it. It was probably somebody dumb like Moby or something. But but they, they were talking about how you know there are obviously so many chord progressions and so many notes and things like that. And they kind of equated it to to a palette of like paint and, and a canvas. And there's like... It's it's what you do with those notes, and that's mm-hmm. what you do with the melody over it, and it's like what you do with. I guess he was trying to say like you don't technically rip off like melodies and and chord progressions oh. and things like that. You set me up for my next so. point, though. All right, tell me. Okay, that doesn't have some familiarity with a Jesus Chrysler song called uh, um, "Rock and Roll Revival." <laughs> Been a while since I played it. It's the same fucking song to me. It's <laughs> identical. <close>. Yeah. 
But someone would have had to heard the Jesus Chrysler song. To, to <laughs> Touche. I think, I'm, I think, as I like to say to my my uh, co-host, LC, I think you just put me in a box. So uh, uh, Hopefully the Aaron Camaro laugh was, was right about there. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're filling in perfectly. He always says, like, put in crickets. Oh, no. Put in the no, laugh. No, never. <laughs> Uh, just giving me show direction as we're recording. Anyway, um, that's all I was getting at. Not not Liz <coughs> Cannon just being over uh, over <laughs> overbearing on the podcast. What are you uh, talking about? Mm. <laughs> you, uh, your words, not mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, before we get into the all the topics I wanted to get into you with today, I heard something driving to work today, and it it's I hear this all the time, but th- this kind of thing drives me batshit fucking crazy and it's typically news or radio uh people and it's just like i just heard something today only 35 fry or 35 fridays till christmas and i'm like shut the fuck up you know i I really look forward to the football every year right but i don't fucking tell me we're eight weeks away from because to me that's the end of summer summer's over man we're only fucking 17 weeks from kickoff it's still snowing outside. Don't talk about the you know the I would a lot of what we get around here is 110 days till the state fair, which is also right around the beginning of football season. I just just live in the moment, man. Just I don't need a countdown. Yeah, I, I see that a lot. It's a, a lot with football. A lot of like you know uh, we're we're 99 days away, and they'll they'll show a player that wore 99, and, yeah. and you know a lot of yeah. graphics and social media clicks and things like that, but. Yeah, I it, and it's always funny too because they'll always be like, "We're a hundred days from football," but like preseason starts next week, and I'm like, "Yeah, well, preseason's kind of the start of football for me." Like that's when I start watching. And, I suppose, but, uh, but yeah, I, I'm with you on that one. Well, well, that was an easy one to get into then. Um, but well, there was some news in music today uh, that I was uh, a little surprised by. Dan Lil- Lilker, did you hear this? He's going to be uh, joining Anthrax on a run of shows uh, due to. Personal reasons for, um, uh, what's the name of the the bass player there? Not Joey. Uh, oh. If you wouldn't ask me, I would have told, could have told. Oh, exactly. All right. Well, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I got the press release right in front of me. It says it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Frank Bello, Frankie, Frank Frankie. Bello. Yeah. All right. Um. Anyway, Frank Bello. They didn't really disclose why, but uh, this is kind of weird because I didn't think. I know Dan was in SOD, but other than that, I really didn't think. I thought the the blood between them was about as good as as it is with uh, the singer from the first record. Um, another, they were doing great here. Uh, a real t- real chatty guy, by the way. I had him on the podcast uh, when uh, Johnny Z died. Boy, if yeah, I could yeah. pull Johnny Z, that would have been bad. Um, <laughs> but this is interesting. I'd actually, uh, I'd kind of like to see it. I think that first record. Um, uh, fist, well, is, is is it technically the first its first full length album, right? Fistful of Metal. Um, I think that's a classic thrash album, uh, and I think the the music and and which Loco had a big hand in writing, um, is pretty good stuff. I wonder if they're going to dig more into that with him being in the band or not. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people posting. Hopefully, they'll play some of the 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 early early tracks. Um, and I think I think even uh, uh, Loker's. Uh, post was uh you know f- hey make sure to stay close we, we might need you in 40 years um you know it'll be cool to see him up there on stage i mean i've uh, my my love of anthrax has been uh documented you know i've always kind of thought they were a little goofy i uh <coughs> not the biggest of anthrax fan so this really doesn't hit too close to hit too close to home and there's one bass player out there that every band needs just like overkill that's Dave Ellison, man. We need to get Dave Ellison in Anthrax. Hard to get your hands on Dave nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is kind of cool, though, man. I mean, I, you know, at, at least it's not like uh, Lizzie Hale singing for Skid Row, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, it, it's it's like, well, you know, let's, what's Danny doing? You know what I mean? Let's, uh, uh, yeah, he's a round away guy. What was his band after uh, Anthrax Nuclear Assault? Is that right? Was he in that one? I think so. Uh, let's just go with it. But uh, uh, I wonder. Uh, sounds good to me. Uh, you, you're a, 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 a bigger in the a bigger insider than I am. Any word on what's going on with Frank Bello? I have no idea. Like I, I saw all this stuff, kind of you know the same as everyone else. So I think he uh, I think he's starting his own brand of coffee. 
and needed a, a few weeks to get it off the ground. So, uh, most likely that's that's most likely <laughs> it. Uh, you know, he uh, you know put out a book, uh, coffee, um, maybe a t-shirt line. You never know. Mm, never know. Clothing is a, a good way to make money nowadays. That's J Jay Z. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of like a uh, hip hop entrepreneur, you're hearing about the news with uh, PDD getting raided by the feds. Yeah, that's wild. I, I, I you know, obviously want to know <laughs> what's going on there, but yeah, it's got some sports connections with the uh, this like kid that played basketball at Syracuse that you know averaged two minutes a game or something. <laughs> uh, got uh, got arrested as his drug mule, and uh, yeah, we're gonna see him. Uh, you know where all this goes man but yeah i mean even with the uh the the nickelodeon documentary and now p diddy and there's a lot of there's a lot of nonsense going on in the uh, music industry yeah it doesn't sound good uh i never had a high opinion of of, of p diddy puff daddy p dizzle whatever you want to call him i always thought like um like he always came across especially when he danced to rap as somebody who wanted to be able to dance and rap but couldn't and like he was like the he was almost like poison to hip hop, uh, and and anytime I saw him, it just seemed like he was always like like that fucking um, Led Zeppelin cover that he did uh, for the Godzilla soundtrack. That oh, was yeah. just garbage. But then I saw him in Get Him to the Greek. Did you see that movie? I did. Yeah, I think he fucking stole the show. I thought he was amazing, <laughs> and but and he played a character that I didn't think a guy like him would play. A guy that like little unhinged. Not not very cool, you know, like and just kind of a dork and an idiot, and uh, and uh, so I, he kind of redeemed himself a little bit for me. But these uh, these latest charges sound pretty serious. Yeah, something's going on there. I mean, if the uh, feds are raiding your house and you're uh, jumping in a private plane to a to a uh, an island that will not, um, you know, extradite you, <laughs> I think there's. Is that what going happened? On He's on an island. I I believe so. Yeah. yeah what, a, out. what a fucker! It's probably Epstein's island. Probably, mm. most likely. You know. But yeah, it's funny. The first person I saw post about it was Sinzak. You know, Sinzak's always you know hitting with the current news <laughs> of, of music. You know? Yeah, he's a he's a regular writer for Mojo on the side. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Sinzak's gonna love a big part of this episode. I think. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Uh, he, he always loves when, when you and I get together. Yeah. Well, you know who doesn't? Uh, as far as I think, uh, but. You know, speaking of getting together, uh, we got time. Let's do a little bit of slobber knockers. Uh, I don't know. We can okay. call it draft prep. Um, but maybe we talk a little bit. We'll start. Uh, we'll kick it to your team. Like, before we get into the draft and, and kind of what we think is going to happen uh, or anything we want to any, – actually, anything we want to talk about, how do you uh, feel about the, the Titans off season? And then I'll go. Um, I mean, we did what you love is, uh, you know, we signed a uh, big money receiver. You mm. love that. You love yeah, it always, I, always I, works. Every time works out. Um, I did. I, I thought I, it was really I, you and I, I talked. I love the, the way they got it. Like because uh, the Jaguars didn't want to extend him until his contract expired because mm-hmm. then they wouldn't have to give up a draft pick, which I understand. Yeah. And so they had a wink, wink deal. And the Titans came in and said, wink this bitch. <laughs> Well, it's funny with both um, Legarius Need and Calvin Ridley, like the Titans were like in it, but then they it, most people were like, ah, they, they, you know, they've moved on, and then boom, out of nowhere, it's just like, oh yeah, by the way, the Titans are signing yeah. Calvin Ridley to a hundred million dollar deal and trading for Legarius Need. Uh, it's funny the the national reaction to a lot of this stuff because when you have a quarterback on the rookie deal. These are the things you're supposed to do. Yep. Like almost any other franchise does this. And they're like, yeah, they yeah. got that quarterback on the rookie deal and they're surrounding him with weapons and they got to find out if they've got a quarterback or not. But then when the Titans do it, everybody's like, what are they doing down there? Just blowing money and blah. And it's just like, what, what is wrong with you people, man? We can have things too. We should, we should try and compete. You know, that would be a great thing. If Will Levis played for the Bears and just had the season he did, We'd be hearing commentators go, I think Will Levis is in the mix for MVP this year. <laughs> Look at them. Because yeah. the Bears are literally doing the same thing that, that uh, the Titans are. And they don't even have a quarterback right now. And they're talking, wow, these guys might win 12 games this season. It's like, you just settle down a little bit. So, <laughs> and, and I have the same thing going on on my side, too, where, you know, 
Kirk Cousins goes to Atlanta, and suddenly the national media is like, wow, I mean, how do you let this guy out of your building? You mean the guy that seven yeah. months ago said the Vikings will never win with? You said, And he's a year <laughs> older and coming off an Achilles, and now you're wondering, what the fuck is Minnesota doing? How do they let this idiot go? It's just like, Jesus. I, and a lot of it yeah. is just the, the typical shit where it's just like, they got time to fill. They want something to talk about. Some of these guys are better, more like Dan Patrick doesn't have any of these hot takes. Dan Patrick, is, is, while all these people are saying that, well, Kirk Cousins, A plus contract, B minus player, uh, D minus results. You know, it's just like how perfect. That's and you and you probably said it last year, the year before, and the year before that because he is who he is. But the Falcons now are like. They're projected to win 11 games this year. What did they do? Win seven last year? Yeah, it was, it was in a bad, shitty yeah. division? That means well, they're that shitty. The with, uh, that was the thing with Derrick Henry. Like We got shit four years ago for paying Derrick Henry like a $50 million contract. And then he plays out the contract, does great. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we let him go, and he goes to the Ravens. And they're like, oh, Super Bowl you know, uh, <laughs> you know, contending Ravens now and all this other nonsense. I'm like, uh. come on. God, it's you guys ridiculed us when we signed him or you know extended him, but then now he goes to the Ravens and is like, oh, that's the missing piece. It it does seem like the Titans and Vikings are very similar. They're the AFC NFC yeah. versions of each other, where they they're never super bad. They're occasionally pretty good, but not good enough, and they never really get that. Like when they are really good, there's all sorts of questions and all these cracks, like. You know, Detroit had a pretty big slump last year, and there was not that fucking nonsense that the Vikings got when they went 13 and a four a year ago. Brian Dable, coach of the year on a nine and seven <laughs> Giants team, or nine and eight, or whatever they were. Uh, Kevin McConnell didn't even get a single vote. He went 13 and four. <laughs> How does Brian Dable look a year later? He's on the hot seat, he might get fired. Well, I mean, Vrabel won it a couple of years ago and fired, you know. So. I still think Vrabel is a pretty fucking elite-level coach. Yeah, but. I mean. Uh, Some of these guys, though, they, they wear out their welcome, and, and they can't. I think that's what happened. Yeah. Mo most, the, the the biggest thing, I think, <coughs> was the, the wearing out of the welcome. Um, I mean, I'm excited to see an offensive coach come in. I mean, we haven't had an offensive coach. I can't remember the last time. And so we'll see what we actually look like when we, you know, want to throw the ball <laughs> <laughs> the way the league is set up i'm surprised any defensive head coach gets hired because it really makes it an an unfavorable destination for a good quarterback so even if you yeah. want to get a free agent or a rookie that you don't want to go eli manning on the bit because you know you, you, you if you do bad you might it might be because you didn't have the offensive support you needed. You have a defensive head coach that doesn't really understand what he needs to do for you. If you do good every year, you have a new offensive coordinator because he's getting hired for another job, and yeah. and you never really get that stability that someone like you know Patrick Mahomes just kind of falls into the lap of Andy Reid, and Andy Reid's like, "I'm never retiring." For some reason, I'm this fat and I don't die, you know, and it's just. Uh, <laughs> I'm 90 years old. I weigh 400 pounds. I eat fucking Kansas City ribs, which we know are basically the equivalent. Kansas City barbecue is basically a McRib. Uh, <laughs> you got you got to go to Toledo <laughs> to get good barbecue. Uh, <laughs> all I'm getting at, you know, that oh, yeah. that's the perfect so, scenario. Huge hub, huge hub in Toledo. And I look at the Viking situation. You know, if I'm a rookie quarterback, I want to go there, not Chicago. Uh, I, I don't want to go to fucking the Commanders. They, they hired Dan Quinn, you know. The Patriots are basically like one of Belichick's former players on, on defense. It's like, this is a nice situation. Hey, we got Justin Jefferson, uh, Jordan Addison. We got a tight end catch. Got a running back from Green Bay that's supposedly pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you guys just set it up pretty well. I mean, if if you guys could get somebody like Kirk Cousins in there. Man, like, imagine yeah, if he was like, available. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl. Oh, God. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just indifferent, you know, because there's so much going on. There's so many new pieces, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, off, you know, defensive coordinator, just so much new right now that I, I, I'm kind of like, 
holding back my uh, expectations because I know a lot of teams also do this too. Like the the Browns are like always king of free agency, and then they always yeah. suck. So it's like I I don't. How I, is their I, coach I we're, one we're coach of the year? The two of the three last seasons. I think he's a but good I'm coach. Also, I, but but I also know that like. You know, we're we're basically doing what I always see teams do is spend way too much in free agency and then not produce yeah. on the field. So I'm just curious to see, you know, with the with the draft coming up, if we get the left tackle, if we get the wide receiver. But uh, you know, I, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. How about that? Where do the Titans pick? Seven. So there's a good chance that we'll be trading a couple of picks to you to get that and uh, pick up uh, yeah. JJ McCarthy or something. So you're yeah, in that I zone. Mean, that, that, that's that's the talk. You know the. Uh, oh, you're hearing that. We could get one of those picks from the Vikings, but uh, yeah, it's it's either that. I saw uh, you know one of those fake trades on the internet today. It was like uh, you guys trade like that 11 pick to Arizona for uh kyler murray and another pick i, I saw like, that yeah it was like, was like that ain't was, happening man i was like baka will turn in is he's like hey, you know what i'm i'm a cheese head now <laughs> god no well it, that's 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 let's be realistic here there was talk that russell wilson was going to end up here and that would have been harder for me than kyler murray um but at the same time i'm like well if we get russell wilson the way pittsburgh did you know which is basically one year for a, a you know and you know, you're not really paying him. Um, then yeah. I'm like, you know, maybe Kevin. McC- I mean, look, look what Kevin McConnell did with fucking Josh Dobbs and Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins had like three 400 yard games in a row, and we were. He doesn't turn the ball over. We probably win at least two of those games. And nine and seven yeah, or nine. Astro Dobbs, man. Yeah, yeah. Look, like won three games in a row with a guy he fucking barely had. So. I think maybe uh, Darnold, uh, you know, turns into basically, you know, Josh Allen this year. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, that seems realistic. So, but so anyway. it's like, guys, what is 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 this his fourth or fifth team now? <laughs> this is team four, I believe. Okay. Do we do we really count Sam Fran? He didn't really do anything. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm. Uh... Obviously, I mean, I listen every day to all the nonsense on the on the yeah. sports talk, and it, it was funny when we traded for uh, Legereus Sneed. I was like, I was oh. trying to go to bed, and then all of a sudden, this trade came through. And the next thing you know, my wife comes in, and uh, she's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm watching Legereus Sneed highlights." <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I I can't. I'm sick. It's a sickness, Paco. Well, yeah, like uh, a couple things. I'll come back to that because uh, it ties into the Minnesota a little bit. But uh, if I, you know, my wife works retail, so there's a, a an evening or two per week where Bach goes home alone, and I am almost always rabbit holing down a handful of Viking podcasts and just uh, one thing I don't enjoy though is mock drafts, and we're in that time of year, so I skip yeah. a lot of them. I'm just like, these are so this is such this is such filler. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, but the, all the speculation, all the rumors, all the news, it's just like, and I don't know, it's fun. So I think it's probably okay. But at times I'm like, man, I know way too much about some of this shit. That's never going to happen. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> fucking a, <laughs> yeah. uh, on the luxurious need thing. The, the Vikings were rumored too to, uh, have into trade interest. And I knew we were also have interest in trading up to get a, a first round quarterback. I'm like, that ain't happening. They're just not going to trade for this guy who needs a big bucket of money when you get him. Uh, when we got to sort out this quarterback thing, and then I saw what you guys gave up for him, and I'm like, "Motherfucker, why didn't they fucking trade for the guy?" <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think a lot of fan bases were like that. Yeah, I was like, they didn't give up much, man. Yeah, I mean, the the other part of it too is is prior to last season's draft, you know, the last few drafts haven't been very good and we're not like re-signing players from those drafts. Yeah. And we had like almost a hundred million dollars in cap space. And we still have like $50 million in cap space uh, after, after this first uh, wave of free agency. So, you know, throw it or throw the money around a little bit. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And I, I think the, the Snead deal, um, yeah, you know, he's like the sixth or seventh highest paid cornerback right now. And it's a third round pick in 2025. Like, give me that all day. Fuck yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. But uh, 
Um, uh, so what do you think? Should we do like a uh, like a, a live stream during the draft? A little slobber knockers uh, where Baco and Toomey tell everybody how, how these picks are going to uh, screw over these franchises. I don't know. Um, I mean, well, I thought I thought we were about to get into our seven round mock draft. Uh, that okay. We, All right. Well, you're on the clock with. Uh, 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 no, I'm on the clock with Chicago, and apparently Chicago is going to trade their first overall pick to Minnesota for, hold on it, uh, C.J. Ham, fullback. Oh, nice. I think he's like 32. That's so. always a, that's a good pick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, love, yeah I always like that. Pick. Do you get that out there where someone's like, hey, man, why don't we just like say, because I will get this like, we offer him Jordan, Justin Jefferson, our first round pick. They get their first round pick, and their entire franchise becomes the Minnesota Vikings. Who says no? <laughs> you know, it's always these ridiculous things. It's like yeah. you know, we trade, we we give our second and third round pick to Kansas City. They give us Mahomes. That's I don't know why the Vikings aren't doing this. That sounds good. Yeah, well. I always like when they when when fans call in and they're like. All right, let's trade him. Like, Traylon Burks was our first-round draft pick a couple of years ago. He hasn't done shit yet. So everybody's like, let's just trade him, like, a third-round pick and Traylon Burks. And, <laughs> and the, the the radio guys are always like, why would anybody want Traylon Burks? Like, he has not panned out to be anything. Like, yeah. The other teams see it, too. So stop it. Yeah. It's just, uh, it, it's, 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 well, it's fodder, whatever. Um, well, one of the things that uh, happened since we uh, decided to to bro out tonight is uh, Will Skid Row uh, has yet another singer. Um, it is getting kind of laughable, but uh, well, you know the deal. What's going on, man? Uh, I mean, Eric Gronwall. Uh, <laughs> you know, he just, I guess he 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 retires from Skid Row because of his health, and then Lizzie Hale's going to take over for a few shows. I'm just, man, at this point. Fucking bury the hatchet with Sebastian. Like you guys are. It, it would be different if Sebastian was not touring. Like if it was right. like Journey and 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 Steve Perry. Like and by the Steve way, for like, he I, sounds really fucking good. I just saw him. Who's that? Sebastian. Yeah. Yeah. Always. I mean. Yeah. He sounds. He sounds better than ninety nine percent of like those eighties dudes. Like he sounds good enough. He's, yeah. You know, I've seen him. I've mm-hmm. seen him multiple times over the years, and he he always puts on a great show. And they're all playing the same songs. It's not like Skid Row is <laughs> Skid Row is not deeping it, you know, diving in deep to those Solinger records. You know, they're playing the first two or three. You know, maybe something off Subhuman <coughs> Race might might uh, jump into the set list. But yeah, man, just fucking call Sebastian at this point. Like, figure it out because it's it, you're becoming a mockery, and you you've been a mockery, and it's and it's getting worse. I've officially never been a. You have to bring Sebastian. Look, if they do, I'll support it. I don't care. I also get why. Maybe it's because you know I I I'm, I know what it's like to be in a band as as do you. But it's just like they were yeah. doing fine without him. And uh, kind of like our trade scenario, it's like let's give give them a bag of beans and they give us everything we want. The fans seem right. to act like, oh if, man, imagine how much money they'd get if Sebastian was back in the band. And the answer is. Maybe slightly more. It really, I mean, they're not suddenly going to be touring arenas uh, and doing like a month at the Sphere in Las Vegas with $400 tickets every night. I mean, it's going to be basically the same shows. They're usually the headliner as it is. There might be a a $5,000 kick, and that's probably just to cover Sebastian's fee. Um, And so that said... I'm, if I'm them, I'm like, okay, guys, if if we're gonna keep doing this, this this really is getting silly. We have the hailstorm singer filling in, and I really thought Gronwell did a really good job, but I thought the guy before him did really good too, ZP Three, and I thought uh, the TNT guy Tony Harnell, he was fucking great too, man. Uh, and I thought Johnny Solinger was really a good good Sebastian clone. You know what I mean? They've never really... It's not like I've ever said, oh, that guy was horrible. Uh, but, yeah, and, and then I I, uh, I got... You know, you, I see some of the bullback, oh, here comes the typical got to bring back Sebastian shit. No, no, no. They're going to find somebody else, and then we're going to get the typical... I think I just saw this guy, and I, he's the guy. He's the... You, know, <laughs> you get that, too, man. 
where yeah. it's every time they find a new one, the, some of the fan base is like, "Man, this is it. This is they finally found their." Yeah, no, they didn't. They'll be replacing their them and Great White are in the same cycle. Mitch Malloy is just two spots ahead of me. I saw the list to be the next Skid Row singer. Uh, so I just uh, and and Lizzie Hale doing it does zero for me. I just like I, some people are just like gushing over this this idea, I, and she'll do a fine job. She's a talented singer. It's not not anything uh, a shot against her, but as far as a fan, I'm like I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, the creepy dudes in the comment section are going to be pumped. That I'm glad you said that, and not me. I got a little pushback from LC last week when I went into the Bobby Brown guys. But, uh, uh, yeah, you know, it, but it is, man. It, it is. It's like it, it, there's nothing spectacular there other than that you're old and horny. <laughs> At least it, <laughs> you know. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, comment sections on any girl doing anything is you know, a girl playing guitar, they're just sexy and talented. You know, you're like, why can't you just say she's talented? Like, a lot of it's you know? dog whistle, though, where it's just like, you know, it's like, you know, she's. I was just blown away by baby metal. Like, I, I mean, I've been going to concerts for 30 years. I've never seen. Did you see that? That was so amazing. It's it's like it's like well. I did see it, and uh, n- none of those hyperboles or adjectives popped into my head. Uh, I'm also a little grossed out by you, so. <laughs> <laughs> and and I will say for the record, women are as equally creepy on the internet. It just guys get the wor- the worst of it. But but if Ooh, you look at a hot. photo of like an underwear ad. And then you look at the comment section, and girls are like, "Oh, I'd, I'd like those uh, that guy in the underwear walking around my house." And yeah, I mean, girls are girls are equally as creepy, if not worse. Sometimes I've seen them just like absolutely going, uh, you know, bananas on, on dudes. You don't think the double standard there is that when the dude in the picture sees that, he's not instantly going to check him out? Like, I wonder what she's like. Oh, damn. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, hey, <coughs> he, he, I mean, you know, hey. He might be going to the comment section checking out the dude. But I mean, you know, some girls might be like, "I wonder where all these dudes that you know like me are." So, but then again, it's you know the the dudes that 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 uh, you know comment on plush and Orianti yeah. and Nina Strauss. You know, you want you want to stay away from that. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it. I'm with you 100. You, you know how I feel on that stuff. I just yeah, uh, you know, it's just kind of sick, man. You know, it's it's different than when you're 15 jerking off to Lita Ford. You're right. 50 in jerking off to old pictures of Lita Ford, and now they look like this. It's like, <laughs> uh, anyway. But yeah, look. I mean, good luck to 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 Skid Row, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just, I just don't know where they find the. I mean, I guess it always comes down to YouTube. money, but but uh, it's just like, why do they continue to want to do this? It's just like, don't they ever go, fuck, God, it just it happened again. Now this one, um, I I don't have any problem with anybody's you, I understand he you know we all knew he had he was uh had leukemia about with leukemia before he joined Skid Row and his explanation at least he took the time to kind of point out like look my immune system just isn't there and it's difficult to balance this shit out and not get sick while I'm on tour and and it is a problem what I am fucking tired of is this movement of like so I did what was most important to me I put my health Ahead of money, okay, yeah. fine, good for you. I'm, I'm just, I, didn't, didn't all the other singers too? D- didn't they leave maybe for their mental health? Were they not like <laughs> mentally sick of putting up with this shit with these guys? Who knows? I mean, we act like because we can put a tangible thing on it, and we see this all the time with these fake TikTok videos where it's like, you won't believe what's happening at my job right now. I'm at a place of work. By the way, I'm not wearing any work clothes. There's nobody around me. And for some reason, I'm whispering like I don't want to be heard. And it's just like, <laughs> and, uh, everybody quit because it's a toxic environment. But in my mental health, I'm just sick of it. Life isn't easy. Not everything, not every fucking problem is a sign that somebody else needs to fix something for you. And I'm just, and I'm not saying that's what's going on with him. He was very honest, but it, it did end with that when I'm like, you could have just said, my immune system isn't is up to where it needs to be. It makes it difficult to tour, and frankly, it's hurting the band. It's not fair. End of statement. 
So I put my health ahead of money. It's like, just stop it. Of course you did. You know, also, you, get my autobiography that's coming out. Yeah, soon. there. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just like, but it's all these like catchphrases and hot words, and it's like, it's again, it's you know what? To anybody out there, if you're working somewhere that isn't healthy, get out. Yeah. And if enough of you do that, that's going to make a bigger impact than a bullshit fake. TikTok, I quit my job today because of this video, because there's too many of them to be true. And again, and like, I, I'm just, that, that, that kind of triggered me a little bit to me. The old man. Yeah, the, I've been seeing a lot in it. It seems like it's like up and coming bands and they're like starting to share like the dirt on each other <laughs> and like talking about how this band is a toxic environment. I'm like, have you been in a band? Like no they're shit. all fucking toxic <laughs> environments. What do you talk about? Like everybody's talking shit on each other. Everybody's busting each other's balls. And it, it, it just, I, I, I couldn't imagine being in a band right now. Like it just sounds like it's, or being a young, younger person in a band coming up and trying yeah. to make it. I mean, you know, fuck. I, I Back in the day, like in the old, like those Primer Fifty Five tours and things like that, like that was some of the most stressful shit I'd ever been a part of. And talk about toxic environments and all that other bullshit. But I wanted to be on tour. I wanted to be in a band, and I pushed through it. You know, it's like I didn't run to TikTok and or the uh, you know I didn't fax you know, everybody <laughs> that I knew. You know, you will not believe what's going fax. on on this, on this tour. You know, it, it, it's just wild how how. Everything is a toxic environment now. Yeah, this it, is actually this pod. I'm about to leave this podcast. This podcast was toxic. <laughs> Not the first time I've heard that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, again, no, we we were fortunate that we didn't have these opportunities. I can't imagine uh, being a kid growing up today. Is I am empathetic to the idea of how social media impacts your, your life when you're young and your brain's still developing. My God, I couldn't going through puberty with fucking every porn you need right here would just <laughs> I don't think I'd have a penis today anymore. I mean, I don't think I would I would have been asking to go to the bathroom at school every class. It's like, you know, uh, you know, you just seeing all Kathy Stavenaugh coming in, you know, I'm like, yeah, she's looking pretty good. Now I'm horny and I got to go jerk off to some porn. <laughs> yeah. You just make it like the fact that I could would just make it harder. So I get yeah. it. I, it really, I mean, I, I joke there, but yeah. So at least we didn't have TikTok to vent because maybe we, it probably wouldn't have been a whole. I don't think all, if everything was the same, we would have been better about it. If anything, we raised these nut kids and we should take some responsibility there. But yeah, I just. No, no. Not doing that either. Not my kids. <laughs> my kids are good. Therefore, right. I'm absolved of any fucking... I can be a curmudgeon, but... All right. Well, uh, uh, I don't really have any more on that before I shift gears. to. I got a bunch on Ace Freely to get into with you, but uh, uh, any other talking points that you had on your radar you wanted to touch on? No, no I think we can talk some Ace. Uh, so Ace Freely was, hey, the space, space man. Yeah. So uh, Ace was on, um, but he's been making. First of all, he's making tons of rounds on podcasts. Good for him for that. He's out, literally doing in the work and, and promoting his his new record. Ten yeah, thousand. Pretty much will do anybody's podcast right now. Like but, it's yeah, not even. Uh, he's, he's, I mean, if you get Ace Freely right now, it's not <coughs> even that, that special. Like really. Uh, <laughs> uh, when I heard uh, when Chris told me they were getting uh, Ace on the show, uh, back in the uh, back of my mind, I thought about it and I talked to LC because I was like. Well, you think I should reach out and maybe see if we can get him on the show? But both him and I had a similar attitude. And then, by the way, I, other than like the occasional cheap shot, I'm not gonna nothing I say is an actual criticism of Decibel Geek because we're gonna talk quite a bit, quite a bit about his, his appearance there. Um, but I was just like, I don't. First of all, I don't think Ace is capable of doing something that I would find interesting as as a interviewer. How about that? I didn't know it was possible to get him off the rails the way he did on the Decibel Geek show, uh, but because I would have <laughs> loved that. Uh, but I, I, he's just he. First of all, one thing that the 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 host of that show learned that I was already aware of is that like this guy isn't going to pick up on your subtle joke. He, he you can't do a like quick hitter stuff with him. Uh, he just it's not in him. You know, him and Peter are both kind of like. Like you, you say, hey, who's a better drummer, Neil Pert or John Bonham? Quick, go! And it's like, 
you know, we went on tour with Rush. You know, and it just turns into this whole like, you know, <laughs> right. the, the, you know, it's like uh, he can't can't focus enough. Or, and so they dropped a couple like kind of little cute jokes that Ace didn't pick up on. You know, um, but anyway, the, the point being is that my, Dev- my favorite joke was the uh, my my favorite joke was uh, was Aaron talking about Ace's mom with the Alzheimer's. It's like, oh my God, it's Ace Freely. <laughs> Yeah, like, that was like, again. That was really it. good. And then Ace is like, "No, <laughs> she didn't say anything like that." And it's like, she okay, did, she called me Paul. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, yeah. the point is, neither one of us felt like it was worth the effort. Uh, uh, but I think I was proven wrong with the Dell Week interview. Um, I, I'm gonna say my favorite part, and then I'll, I'll kind of we'll start getting into some of the back and forth and your thoughts. But. It was when you know Ace does those Origins records. He's got two of them out, and it's basically him doing cover tunes. And Aaron Camaro has a song that he wants to pitch to Ace, uh, and a song idea that, uh, and he has this whole wind up. He talks for like three minutes, and then he says the song. There's a slight pause, so he starts singing "You May Be Right" by Billy Joel and all this stuff. And he's like, "What do you think?" And then Ace's like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it wasn't even like it was like instant. It was right away. It's like nah, no. Nah. And then like he told, like, he's like, well, what year did that come out? And he's there. It came in the late seventies. He's like, well, Point of Origins is supposed to be songs that influenced me as a teenager. Then why the hell did he record a song on Creatures of the Night from Kiss? That was after you may be right. It's just right. so. He, and the thing is, he was like. So he was worried about the year, not the influence. He was going to be hard and fast with the idea, like, well, it's got to be a year that I could have been influenced by it. I don't know. It was just, <laughs> but it was just hilarious that, like, Aaron is just, you know, because he's a giant Ace fan, and he oh, yeah. sets the whole thing up beautifully, as he always does. And then Ace is just like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he says nah, and then, yeah, he does go into the whole, like, oh, and this is why I can't do it, and... Yeah, he's like, oh well, I guess I can't do it because, uh, because you know the the his song came out after Kiss was already up and running. Um, I mean, my favorite moments of the of the interview were uh, Chris asking Ace about a demo from fifty years ago to Ace <laughs> Freely, who is who is a crazy person at this point. Do you and, know uh, who and, you're talking to? And he's just like, yeah, I think that was a Gene song, and um, it just I don't know it. it it was fun. I think I think Chris Sinzak needs to be on Ace's payroll for Ace's memories because Chris, as much shit as we give Chris Sinzak, Chris might be like one of the smartest people when it comes to Kiss related facts. Yeah. Like even mm. even when Ace was like, you know, Gene's second movie, and Chris was like, oh, that was blah blah blah. Yeah. And then, then he then he well, said it, something about the scene, and I'm not and, saying you're wrong and your overall point, but I got that one too. Yeah, well, but it was just the fact. That, but then he goes, "Oh, actually, that was Gene's third movie." And then yeah. Ace is like, "Oh, they, who gives a shit about Gene's movies? They all suck." But I'm just saying, like, there were so many little little tidbits, and I think that that's one thing that Ace, you could you could almost hear him get really comfortable with those guys. Yeah, like he got yeah. Real, he got right into his own with, with Chris and Aaron, and having a good time. And but man, talk about a bitter bitter old man. Like he. He hates Tommy. He hates, you know, the fact that, that Kiss didn't bring him back. He, he, you know, the band is technically quote unquote over, and he's still like just Gene and Paul. It's uh, Paul never wanted to me back, and he didn't want to share the spotlight with me, and I wouldn't want to share the spotlight with me either because I'm so much more talented and just. I, I would like to say something fit- there just on that point alone because uh, Ace has said that stuff a lot, um, and here's something I think I would say Ace needs to hear, but. He never will, because um, his hearing isn't that good. Uh, but a lot of Kiss fans who love Ace, and by the way, I love Ace too. Uh, but Ace Freely is the third most popular member of Kiss. If he could rejoin him at any point, and it's not close. So, okay, I can see, uh, like, like in the history of Kiss, like of yep. everyone in the in the world, Ace right is now. The third. In 1985, in 1979, in 1976, it went Gene, Paul, Ace, Peter, all the way through. I'm not saying that everybody agrees with that. I'm saying everybody votes. Those are how the votes come out. 
So. Okay. I I do think there's a little bit to him saying, uh, you know, he might have sold a few more tickets. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah, I I would have been more likely to go if Ace was still in the band. I don't know how likely, but it would have increased the odds. He definitely would have an impact there that I think is valid. But he's not stealing the fucking spotlight from Paul Stanley. Nobody's going, God, what? why is Paul singing? Play all the Ace classics. You know. That's all I'm well, getting. Well, I mean, those last few tours, when you when you did hear Paul sing, you might you might have wanted to hear. <laughs> okay, Aces, Aces, fair uh, enough. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe people would have. <laughs> uh, my my point is, people like, in generally speaking, it's Gene, Paul, Ace, Peter, in that order, and it's always has been. And Ace needs to get o- go over himself a little bit, and actually more so the 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 diehard fans, because they're the only ones that believe that shit. That like, you know. Ace would would double the sales and like you know, no things. It was just kind of like if if Sebastian gets back with Skid Row, Ace would have that level of impact at this at this stage of the game. But right, which I, I would be down for both. I'm actually okay with the the Skid Row one. I I really really want fucking Kiss to stop playing. Just stop. I I, I want them to stop the avatars. I don't want any of this, but. God, just you know, I, I used to be proud to be a Kiss fan. Now I feel like you know I'm embarrassed to to admit it to to people because like, you know, oh really? You know. But the, the the upside is that like those people have no idea what's going on anyway, so they don't really care. But it's all in my head. Like yeah, like even did you know Ace is still in the band? <laughs> like oh Ace. yeah, how about that? Where he's like a good friend of mine was like they're playing out here, and I'm like I want tickets, and he didn't know I wasn't in the band. I'm like, so how good of friends are you? <laughs> right. I'm uh, uh, we're not friends, Ace, and I know. So he doesn't even sound like he likes Kiss that much. The 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 right. friend, not Ace, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I uh, I was. Was really happy for those guys to get that interview. I know that you know they're, they're ones that they've they've always been kind of anti the Skype interview or the over the internet interview. Yeah. Um, so for them getting that, they did put post the raw, and I was I saw the raw uh, clip was like an hour and a half long. It was like an hour and a half with Ace. Wow. He's like, they're like, yeah, we kind of ran a little long, and he even like at the end was just like, yeah, I think I have another interview coming up. But yeah, they they. Uh, you know, I figured it was gonna be like half hour or something, and they was like, "Damn, hour and a half with him." And but I think they, I think they nailed it. I think they they kept him somewhat on the tracks. No, oh, I disagree with that. Oh, <laughs> and that's not a criticism. I'm not. Frankly, I probably would have. I might have pushed him a little further down the tracks, but <laughs> right. I'm sorry when he got into. Well, I got a list here, but there's. A, oh, okay, yeah, let's go. Um, yeah, okay, well. I, the whole Ace loves him some Ace stuff where he talks about he's always been his mom's favorite. And, uh, you know, his doctor is like, oh, my God. And it's like, Ace, nobody has had better blood work ever than you. And, like, well, not I think what he actually said was like, I'm aging in reverse. <laughs> you know, and, and he just like, your blood work is better than it was two years ago. Nobody has ever done that. You know, and it's like. Who's his doctor? The the guy who is Trump's doctor? He's like, yeah, oh, it's a one eighty six foot three. You know, it's just um, the Jendel joke. I wanted to mention uh, because I thought that was a good joke that Sinzak threw in there. But again, I was like, there's no chance this is gonna land with Ace. He's, he has no idea what where you're going with this or why it's funny. Um, but kudos to Chris for throwing it out there. Is all I wanted to get at. Um, and then when he gets into the, have you ever noticed that people from California come up with the weirdest cancers and diseases? Oh yeah. And wow. Sinzak is like, no. And he's like, well, I have, and I know why. <laughs> Look it up. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, I did follow his advice before you got on. Um, I went to Zillow to see how many houses were available in Malibu. While there's plenty of uh, real estate out there, it doesn't seem like every other house. So, uh, I have never heard of the, uh, what do they call it, the Santa Susana uh, Laboratory, but I did look it up. There was apparently some sort of nuclear meltdown there, and that is kind of fueling this whole conspiracy, conspiracy talk. What's disappointing to me, and I know that you're probably less likely to dive into this as I am uh, with your reputation as a music mogul in the business, but the first sign that somebody is about to tell you a bunch of shit is when they said, 
I've done thousands of hours of research. Okay, because you know what a smart person who's actually done thousands of hours of research says? Not that. They never say, don't even question me. And then it's like, you know how much it would cost to move how look like movie studios to San Francisco? Probably not as much as you think, Ace. They shoot movies and TV shows everywhere. Uh, so it's just, it, it got into all that kind of nonsense. And I was like, I kind of felt bad because I don't even know how you deal with that as an interviewer. That's like, because they're like a fan show. They're trying to promote Ace. They're trying to embrace and enjoy this. And this guy's going off of, and that's why the Hollywood, it's like, it just fuck Vince Neal's dog. Vince Neal got money. He, but nobody knows. Cause I, he signed an NDA, but I know it's like, Jesus. <laughs> that was that that was a wild story. I, I I will say that, and it is funny because they they are such kiss nerds that they want they want all the kiss stories and they want the right the the ins and outs of certain and they got songs some. and and you know yeah and then you got Ace over there just going on and on about <laughs> you know cancers in Malibu and houses and we all know yeah, aliens and I are Sinzak here. Did the whole oh. yeah the, the Sinzak was was. Uh, I never heard that Ace, but uh, on the Dynasty tour, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did like that when he so, brought up yeah, a name like that. Uh, do, do, what, uh, tell me what you think of the. What's the first thing you think when you say a name like this? I'm like, not the right game. The guy to play this game with, man. But you know, he he's hit hit her with yeah. hit him with uh, Pixie Esmond, and and he's like. Yeah, Is that the girl that used to dress us? <laughs> <laughs> and I actually, I, that one I thought was kind of endearing and funny. I just that that's the kind of ace that I that I that I definitely embrace. But um, the, the, now the alien thing, of course, of course, after all that bullshit, his he has somebody who knows somebody that was there. And um, can we touch on that a little bit? Um, get your thoughts on this because it was about a year ago. That you started seeing all these like things online about uh, like the government just announced or said that hey yeah you guys have been right all the time aliens are real and we don't even care. Do you remember seeing right. stuff like that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually after seeing a couple of that I kind of dug into it a little bit and I'm going back a ways here because it turns out did I don't. Have, did you do thousands of hours of research on this? Maybe a half hour. <laughs> okay, good enough. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I got that far. Uh, but I did watch some of the testimony and then read a couple of articles. That's that's as far as I took it. I do not run a alien uh, are they real or not podcast, uh, so I'm definitely not an expert. But I can tell you from what I what, what I seen, we we saw nothing more than we all had. We just saw it in front of Congress. I saw it. Do you have proof? No. <laughs> Boom. We're no further along than we were. Um, and so it, look, I'm not saying aliens do or don't exist. I'm not taking a side. I'm saying, let's stop saying the government ex admitted that they were out there. That never happened. Just that one thing. Just that one right. thing. It seems like I'm making you uncomfortable with all the alien talk. Uh, I think you're on well, team I, Tom DeLong. I'm going to pull my mask off and be an alien <laughs> soon. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, those are my quick hitters for, from the, the podcast. By the way, yeah, kudos to those guys. I'm really glad they got it, and they did a great job. It was a thoroughly, easily the most entertaining Ace interview that I've heard on any of the podcasts, friends or not, um, and, and I really enjoyed it. But uh, I have some other Ace news I wanted to touch on before I let you go. Was there anything more that you took All away right, well, from? Well, let me let me get into one thing real quick. Yeah. I, I thought about it on the interview. Uh, the only the, the the creepiest thing on the interview was him talking about his new girlfriend <laughs> and how she's great, uh, how how fantastic she is, and how she's a great lover and all this other nonsense. I'm and then good he at talks sex. About her. <laughs> but then he also said something about her daughter being in the video. And she's like, yeah, super like, hot, like, super hot, the super hot one. That's her daughter. I was like, hey, hey, let's not talk about that. That's, I mean, even though the daughter is probably 35, but still, just like, don't call your girlfriend's daughter hot. Right? I stop it. And I, I'm gonna tell you this: don't tell someone their significant other, fiance or not, girlfriend, wife. Man, she is really hot. And then, right. and then, if you said that to me, I don't know how you'd react with it, but it wouldn't be like, "Yeah, have you seen him in this video?" She, <laughs> and then it was like, he, "I could." And also, it was a little underwhelming when, like, he was like, "How old do you think she is?" And then the answer is fifty-four. 
<laughs> right. okay, Ace, you gotta skew a little lower if you're gonna go with that. You won't believe it. She's 22. Right. I can believe she's 54. <laughs> Attractive lady. She looks fine. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. But that's not that, that, that creepy Jimmy Page stuff where he's still dating like you know 21 yeah. year olds. Yeah. Nah. God, everybody's got to talk about that now because, oh, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, the, yeah, that's my, that's going to be my stepdaughter. Ah, I'm going to be, I'm gonna She's be hot. Use the same bathroom as that. She's super hot. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, you know, I wonder if like you know if you know if if Ace was like asked to like like did a job interview it was like, well, tell me what your weaknesses are, Ace. He'd be like. Well, I'm not very good at not giving a woman an orgasm every time we have sex. <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. <clears throat> I'm not I'm good at ac accepting how much people love me. <laughs> I just care too much. Yeah, he cares too much. All right. Well, he's got some other news. Um, uh, he he uh, uh, he he was on the the Monsters of Rock cruise and. Apparently, he was late to the show. By the way, I've witnessed this several times where Ace Freely show comes off late. Um, and uh, usually he's the headliner, though, but apparently he pushed the darkness back. So this was not received too well from uh, the, the singer of the darkness. I'm trying to find my notes as I talk to you here. Anyway, uh, so the darkness comes on. And Ace says, uh, well... Uh, the Darkness comes on. He says, let me tell you a little story. This is Justin Hawkins, lead singer of The Darkness. Uh, you all notice I wear a watch on stage. Some of you think he has to regard time because he wants to get back there and eat prawn sandwiches in the dressing room. My best cockney. There's a bit of truth in that, but I think the important thing is about rock and roll is punctuality. Now, if I find audio, I'll probably just drop it in here and, uh, for people who want to go check out our podcast instead of this video. Uh, you can hear him say it himself. But uh, somebody overran, and thus, thus, that's how English, we were late coming on stage. I apologize to you all. I'm not going to name names. I think someone on their writer requirements are a little bit difficult to source in the middle of the fucking Caribbean. One of those being wig adhesive. Shots fired. I'm talking about Ace Freely. Anyway, so... Ace came back and uh, basically just said uh, uh, he has uh, no hard feelings with Justin. Uh, uh, well, I watched the video of this earlier. Uh, when you told me to, to, to we were going to talk about this, I was like, I don't know the ins and outs of what, what happened. So there's full-on video and recaps and all this other stuff. Um, I the more I watched it, the more I sided with Justin a little bit more just be, just because like when I do interviews and I say the interview is going to be at a certain time, mm -hmm. I like to be punctual and on time and, and ready to go and, you know, move on with life. Um, I guess astronomy came out and said that it was uh, KK's priest was the issue yes, before yes. ACE that pushed ACE back that pushed, you know, pushed the darkness back. Um, but I, I, I watched all the stuff. I watched the video. I watched, you know, uh, uh, Justin on stage, kind of, kind of going at Ace with the wig adhesive jokes. He did multiple of them throughout the, uh, <coughs> throughout the night. Oh, Ooh. sorry, I left you hanging there. Yeah, no, yeah. but I left him, um, you know, just multiple wig adhesive uh, jokes, and then. Uh, I guess I guess it does go on to the next day, where astronomy, where where Justin goes down for a cup of uh, coffee, and Ace is sitting over there with astronomy and like a bodyguard. <coughs> the bodyguard goes to Justin, ask him if there's really an issue. He's like, oh, I was just you know taking the piss out of him or whatever, and and they actually end up uh, Ace and Justin chum it up, take a few photos, and move on with life. But uh, I, I, I'm kind of on, I'm on Team Justin on this one. I mean, just do your set. And if you're late to the show, you got to cut your set. How about that? If well, you're the opening band, I do. I, yeah, well, absolutely, I, I do agree with that. I, I've definitely been in that situation where sometimes things get get started a little late. So, I, and almost always, it was never our fault. But we always accommodated the next band and tried to wrap up a song or two earlier. But 
Um, I do have a scoop here. This is not something that I don't think has been announced yet. So this is coming fresh out of Cobras and Fire. When um, Ace heard what Justin said on stage and, and called him out and called him a cunt, um, uh, Ace immediately uh, went on Eddie Trunk and, and said, you have seven days to apologize. <laughs> and apparently Justin just waited till the next morning. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he says uh, no hard feelings. Um, I love him. He's hilarious. Me and Justin are bros. He's hysterical. He's really funny. He's just a crazy guy who does stuff. That's all. It's not actually true, but I'm with you. This is like believing Guns N' Roses during the, the heyday before they broke up that, like, it's not their fault they're late for the 38th time in a row. Ace does this all the fucking time, and, and John Astronomy is just it doesn't have a lot of credibility with, 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 with me personally. Um, I, I just, what else is he going to say? I think he would have been wiser to not come out at all and let Ace actually handle it the way he did. Then I think things would have might have been, you know, a little more better. But to come out and say, actually, it's KK's priest. I'm like, oh, great. Now you got a fucking problem there. And it's just like, ah, oh, Jesus. Here's a text that proves it. Yeah, it proves it as much as it proves there's alien life in front of Congress. So I just, it, it just... Everything's secular on this show. Everything circles back to me. It always comes back, but yeah. And I've I've become more of a fan of uh, Justin over the last you know year or so. Watching his uh, YouTube show, hundred like percent. It's, it's it's great. Never got into the darkness, yeah, because he was actually looking forward to seeing Ace. He he reviewed uh, the Cherry Medicine video. Yeah, and you know how he can go one way or the other. He's not like oh everything is great. Oh, like he'll call shit out. Um, and name names, he's not afraid to get into stuff, uh, and, and kudos for him for that. But I was, like, surprised that he was like, this is amazing. This is perfect. I can't wait to meet Mr. Peely. And I was like, and then, like, <laughs> and then he realized what it's like to actually work with Mr. Freely, and it's just like, ah. Uh. You know, it's like, why'd that guy keep telling me how hot his girl stepdaughter was? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know you saw the video. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. You see that? That's my fiance. I'm gonna fuck her later. She's hot, right? Tell me she's, she's like hot. Lover. Please. Uh, how old? Do, how old do you think she is? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great if they would have been, because that was a good line by Camaro too. Like, too young for you. Would have been great <laughs> if they would have said, "I don't 38." Like, no, it's like a little, a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, 54. Well, good for her. Uh, well, one last thing then to me. Um, where'd it go here? Uh, Ace, uh, well, he's got his new album out with uh, uh, basically anybody who's followed Ace's career. The 10,000 Volts album produced in, uh, by and co-written most of the stuff by Steve Brown from Trickster. Anybody who... Uh, has followed Ace the you know basically I don't know the last thirty years it pretty much had an inkling that if he did any guitar playing at all it was strictly leads and guys like me go yeah he's not writing these songs either and not that they're that great but you know he's probably got a heavy hand in some of these poor lyrics but Steve Brown went on a podcast that uh, well you know it's got a coin involved let's just say that I don't want to give him too much attention. How many of them? I th more than two, less than four. Uh, how's that for a, a political answer? Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, but oddly, the coin only has one side. Uh, but <laughs> that was bad. Uh, so, yeah, they were interviewing Steve Brown because they're a Kiss-related podcast. And I said, well, how much of the writing did you do? And apparently Steve Brown dropped 97%. <laughs> Which does seem a, a little odd to say that you're out there promoting this guy's record and you know this is going to make him look bad. You know, it'd be like Jakey Lee on the Bark of the Moon tour saying, Ozzy isn't even on the record. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, so Ace heard about it and he was disappointed. And once again, calls Eddie Trunk and says, He has seven days to apologize. <laughs> and once again, he, uh, he, unlike Paul Stanley, these guys are like, I'm I'm not going through that. Fuck that. He went right to the apology. So yeah, Ace claims he got an apology from him. Well, actually, Ace called uh, Eddie Trunk and said uh, he has seven days to tell me how old my girlfriend is. <laughs> <laughs> Just take a guess. Yeah, 
Look at that, 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 his stepdaughter, the, the, her daughter over there. Yeah, I get to look at that ass every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Timmy, did you know yeah. that Ace's go-to drink when he got, got m- her money early in, in, in Kiss was uh, Dom Perignon? They spent about ten grand a week on Dom. Wow. Doesn't that just reek of, like, white trash getting money for the first time i'm fancy this is what well he did say that uh he did say that he was in a gang and that peter chris was in a gang so yeah he's like uh, i mean all peter and i had in common were these 19 fucking things (laughs) we were both in gangs Oh, and he'd be, <laughs> we keep going back. The God, the seriously, people, if you haven't listened to the Decibel Geek uh, interview with Ace Freely and you're a Kiss fan with any level of interest, check it out. I cannot I actually just drop the entire interview in right here, <laughs> and then we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, he he talked about like, uh, yeah, a lot of people drop the ball with the vinyl, like Walmart. They only did two thousand, and fans couldn't get him because he sold out. Also, I bought one thousand, <laughs> so I can resell them at a higher price on tour. Do you think that has anything to do with the shortage? I don't know, but uh, weird Kansas coming out of California. I've researched it. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, that guy fucking cracked the code on fucking cancer clusters, but he couldn't fucking realize that like, maybe people couldn't get the records is because he bought half of them. He also told uh, told them that he was a computer whiz because <laughs> he told because Shannon Tweed needed her uh, yes, her, you know, help with her laptop. <laughs> And the weird thing is that, like, uh, spoiler alert for anybody that wasn't aware, but uh, uh, when uh, Cobras on Fire did the Dirt Day special, that was me doing Ace Freely. He was not really on the show. Now, while my impression is definitely not spot on vocally, I think I captured his fucking essence. I think he went on Decibel Geek just to prove, like, I really am that wacko. It's just like, God. Oh, my God. Yeah, I... You know what? Fuck it. Who cares about Steve Brown taking credit for what he did? Uh, the, the Decibel Geek interview. Oh my God! I just uh, I'm glad we got a chance to talk about this. But yes, absolutely. Well, uh, you have anything you want to promote? You're not really doing anything, though, are you? No, no, I'm good. Um, oh, uh, breaking news. Uh, Blabbermouth has just posted Ace Freely on Eric Singer. I know he would have preferred having me play guitar and kiss over Tommy Thayer. Oh, my God. Uh, and during a recent appearance on the Decibel Geek podcast, they got some... Since Zach and Aaron got some uh, Blabbermouth love, they can finally stop <coughs> whining. I, I can't believe that they went with that. Like, if I'm at Blabbermouth, I'm like, that's low... Ha- that There's some... Be- there's gold. Maybe they're just getting warmed up. You know, that's yeah. happened for both of us where they they come up with a couple of clips. You come, well, that's a weird one to pick. And then all of a sudden, like, there's five of them. They're just spreading them out. Um, I texted Chris. I'm like, I'm pretty sure Blabbermouth is going to have something to go with. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Good times. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm laughing too hard at this. I'm like, I'm starting to lose my voice. But, uh all right, well, the Talk To Me podcast, you can be found anywhere you find any podcast. You're part of the New Metal podcast. Of course, you have the new cast. Did I get that right? The new pod, new, new pod. pod, with your your host, Ro. It, it's his birthday today, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, birthday to him, today. as we're recording. Him. Um, Yeah, I did uh, I did my first, um, I actually rented out a podcast studio here in town. Uh, did an in-person interview with Chad Rulig of For the Fallen Dreams, kind of a uh, a, a, a nice run through podcast. I've interviewed him a few times, friendly with him. So if it sucked, I did. You know, it wasn't going to be bad if I didn't put it out. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm actually waiting to get the footage back. This will be like the first time I think someone else has ed- ed- edited a podcast for me. I'm kind of freaked out by it, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm curious to see how it comes out. A little wow. two camera shoot. So so uh, so yeah. Look, it it looked cool from what I saw. So I'll take it. All right, well, good for you. You know, I'm always proud of your success and your the way you keep uh, basically flying off ahead of uh, shows like mine and leaving us in the dust. It's uh, 
Well, like, you know, I, it sucks. It really does. Uh, we, we all. <laughs> I'm just constantly ripping you guys off. So hopefully, no one will ever find this podcast. Oh, by the way, uh, I forgot to bring in my new segment: uh, two bangers and an oldie, but uh... <laughs> and a classic. Yeah, we wouldn't need a th- oh, classic. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't need one more person uh, of, uh, younger than me anyway. Then we could have had two bangers and a classic. But uh... there we go. All right. Uh, anyway, we can, you know, we're like Ace Freely and his lady. You know, a couple of bangers. I'm so good at sex. I joke off to my stepdaughter. She's she's a great lover. God. I don't need I don't need to hear any 72 year old man <laughs> talk about how his girl's all a good lover. Oh my like, God! Have you seen their their? Uh, he he's got like uh, somebody. Maybe it's her. I don't know. Um, but he's clearly got a bigger social media presence than he ever had. A lot of it tied into promoting the record, so understandable. But there are these like random. It's almost like the Osbournes, where it's him and his uh, lover going into Walmart. But it's also yeah. kind of like a a trailer to point out, like I drive a Bentley, you know. So, and I just like it reminds me of the champagne. Like you know, it's like Ace, you're driving a Bentley to Walmart. You know, I, that's not exactly like proof of like how successful you are. If anything, it proves you have no idea what success is. But so I'm watching these things and they're they're cliche. And he's like, "Oh, look at this! I'm Ace Freely picking up this in Walmart." You know, <laughs> and and, right. and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at her and I'm like, "Ah, what?" A, I'm thinking all these negative thoughts. I don't want to put it out there. But then I'm like, "Wait a second. First of all, this is kind of common, and it's nice that he's doing this. But they they actually genuinely seem to be enjoying themselves." And I'm like, you yeah, know, good for him. Good for her. Right. Have fun. Just go and keep doing these dumb videos. I can I can sit at home and quietly judge you without judging you. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's all right. You got better things to worry about than this guy. Yeah, you know, hey, if they're in love and they wanna they wanna, you know, call each other lovers and <laughs> all that other nonsense, have have at it. But uh but yeah, it's funny he's at this point I'm like, why would you ever get married? Like, don't get married again. You're 72. You're, I don't even think gonna... he's divorced from his first wife. Uh, well, yeah, I, mean... I, I wouldn't say that either. But yeah, he's like he's you know just talking to, even in the Decibel Geek interview talking about you know I'm probably you know I'm gonna marry this one. Tie the knot. I'm like, dude, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm by have the way, that Binley. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hi, I take it further. If I'm Chad Kroger and I got that giant pile of money and I also have a mirror, I'm going. I'm never marrying anybody. There's nobody that's ever going to marry me because they love me. Oh, it's hard enough when you're good looking and rich, but when you look like that and you're rich, oof. Just say, just just line them up. Fuck all that. Fuck them hoes. <laughs> fuck them. <Yeah. laughs> Rock's not dead. Fuck them hoes. <laughs> that's a great way to sign off, buddy. Well, it's always a pleasure to catch up with you, but uh, it really does. We should record all our phone calls too. Maybe we can put those out. But uh. yeah, we might as well just have uh, have some some sidecasts. Uh, quickly though, I do have a. Uh, um, I do I do believe the the Titans will go uh, seventeen and zero this year. So that means you guys have to go sixteen and one or seventeen yeah. and one. Yeah, I was actually gonna when you said that, I was like, well, I don't think that's possible because we play each other and the Vikings are gonna go seventeen and zero. Well, so, no, I don't know. Could be sixteen zero and one for both teams. <laughs> I hope we play the first week of the year we tie, so we just have to have that odd fucking tie all year. Just oh god, hanging over our heads. Starting the season 0 and one, <laughs> man, that's such that that's a buzzkill for a fan. But hey, week two is around the corner. Now I believe it's here. Do you know that or not? Uh, that's actually what I was looking up. Let's see what we got here. Cool. Twenty twenty, man, it's already twenty twenty four. I know, like man. Flying cars and shit, man. Um, We've known each other almost a decade at this point. That's unreal. Wow, that's because you're a child. <laughs> um, we yeah, it's it's in Tennessee. Road trip. I'm calling, Road. telling the missus gotta go. So we'll yeah, see. What... I'm sure she's gonna be all about that. She'll be like, now there was. Uh, I, I don't want to drop his name on here, but uh, I was told like the next time the Vikings play down here, come down here. I'll hook you up if so if, uh, if my bro still has season tickets, um, but he's in the podcast universe, so I don't, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> you got to be that guy. like knocking on his door, like, hey, I just, uh, I'm here. Are we going? Yeah. <laughs> Remember when you said that one thing? Uh, oh my god, yeah, because it was like at this point eight years ago. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> right? Because uh, we play every four years, and I don't know, whatever. All right, buddy. 
Well, cool. Appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate you too. Um, and by the way, I want you to do something for me just personally and always prioritize your health above everything else. Okay. Okay. Don't be in toxic environmental rooms like that place Rock's that causes dead. calls all it's the just cancer toxic and environment. Call the cancer <laughs> clusters and and people in California getting weird diseases. So that's toxic. <laughs> yeah. No, that's to- yeah, that's all kinds of different toxics. Yeah. That's right. toxic. That's a real toxic environment, kids. You could be living in Malibu. How horrible right. would that be? <laughs> well, they're getting a good deal on a new house on Zillow. So there we go. All right, buddy. Have a good night. All right, man. See ya.